So uh, let's talk a bit about index uh, compression. So um, why do you need to compress indices? You need to do this because indices are actually quite big. So uh, if, you, if you have an index of a billion web pages, uh, that will take quite a bit of space. And uh, you are not going to be able to store it in main memory, but you will be able to store it on disk. right? So uh, how much does a three terabyte drive cost now? You can get one for 100, for 100 pounds or so. Right? Out there. What if you wanted to have three terabytes of main memory? Good luck. You can actually, you can actually, you can get one from Prey, <laughs> but um, it'll, um, it, it'll, it'll, it'll cost like this building. <laughs> so, um, so the point is, disk is really, really cheap, and if you wanted to, you could go and buy a couple of hard drives and actually have enough space to store an equivalent of Google's index on your machine. Again, I'm not kidding. You can. So you can easily put 10 terabytes into your, into your machine. And that will cover easily 10 billion pages, 20 billion pages. So on your, on your desktop computer, you can have an index sitting around. Um, now, what good is it on disk if you can't bring it all to memory? Uh, not much. And you can't bring it all to memory because you'll never have that much memory. Um, so any type of an algorithm that you do will have to get portions of an index into memory bit by bit. And for that, you need I.O. And I.O. is expensive. So the more you can compress your data, the better it is for you. Because your memory is actually a lot faster, and your CPU is a lot faster than the interface to disk. So compression, which is usually an expensive thing, uh, doesn't really matter because you will offset it by lower costs of reading the data from disk. <clears throat> so uh, this will reduce the space, it'll improve the I.O. time. Uh, but furthermore, to keep things fast, we're going to use very specialized methods. So I'm not going to talk about the generic compression algorithms, I'm going to talk about compression algorithms that are specific to uh, inverted indices. These are very simple, uh, but they do give a substantial amount of compression. Um, the basic two, uh, there, there are two basic ideas in compressing inverted lists. So um, our inverted lists typically consist of lots of numbers, and these are big numbers, and we talk about why they're big numbers. So we'll take those big numbers and make them smaller, and then once we have smaller numbers, we'll try to pack them into a smaller number of bits. So those are the two basic ideas. So uh, the first one, uh, creating smaller numbers, this is called delta encoding. So uh, think about what your inverted list is. An inverted list is a sorted list of document IDs or document numbers, document or, or positions. Um, document numbers are big. So if you imagine that you have 10 billion pages, then um, you have numbers that are in the 10 billion range. And what that means usually is um, if you want to store 10 billion, how many bytes is that going to take? A number which is 10 billion. So the answer was a logarithm. Yeah, it's sort of uh, related. Uh, but so if you have four byte integers, you cannot store a number that's bigger than four billion. Right? So uh, if you wanted to store large numbers like that, your favorite uh, programming language, whatever that happens to be, will happily substitute eight eight byte integers, right? So it will actually use long integers to store everything. So every document ID will take eight bytes to store. Right? <clears throat> uh, and that quickly adds up, because when you have these uh, inverted indices with lots of big numbers, uh, every number now takes eight bytes to store. That adds up to uh, quite, quite, quite big storage requirements. Um, the basic idea of delta encoding is to notice that while the numbers themselves are big, in many cases the differences between the numbers are going to be fairly small. And the differences are small precisely because we keep the index sorted by document ID. So this could be, so assume this is a big uh, base, and uh, this could be the inverted list for the word ink. So 
it occurs in document number 100,002, 100,007, 100,008, 100,011. So all those are big numbers. Um, <clears throat> But if, but if I take the differences between adjacent numbers, I end up with numbers that are much smaller than that. So these are just the deltas, hence the built in coding. So you subtract 100,002 from 100,007, and you get a 5. So that's the delta between this position and that position. And um, by doing this repeatedly, you can replace the entire inverted, uh, inverted index with. Um, with, uh, with the deltas of occurrences. This, is, uh, this doesn't work very well for infrequent words, but it does work miraculously for frequent ones, right? So words that tend to occur all over the place uh, will, the differences between subsequent document IDs will be small. So you will get small numbers. 